this is what I get to deal with. This fuzzy butt. You comfortable, Simon? Hmm? No comment. Okay, let's get the day started. Okay, finally got the cat off my back so I can work. So today I'm working on some loose ends on the 72 stage one, uh, specifically the horns. Last week I, I found that uh, neither of the horns worked and did some troubleshooting and I'm gonna go through that, not step by step, but I'll kinda do a once over on so you kinda understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it uh, to do some troubleshooting on why horns don't work. So without much ado, let's get started. Might be a good idea to have a, a second person here so they can hold the horn button down at, while you test voltage at the horn themselves. Okay, getting a little closer here. I've got one of the horns removed already and that's the one that doesn't work. So this is the low horn, high horn's gonna sit right next to it. Each of them only has one wire going to it, so you, which means the core support is gonna be the ground. So if you when you measure your voltage, with your meter. Put your hot here and ground it somehow, somewhere on a, another bolt or somewhere where you know it's going to be grounded to the same spot that the horn's gonna be mounted to because that's where the power comes from. So, let me see if I can get this set up to where you can see it without me holding this camera. Take your hot. You can probably just stick it in here to get it to stick and then take your ground and put it here. I'm not gonna get any power from it right now because I don't have my buddy. So when you get your buddy, hook this up and put these together and see what kind of voltage you get on your, your meter. Actually, it needs to be on DC current, not AC. Uh, so do that and you should get somewhere around, I don't know, 10 to 12 volts. But that's how you measure it if you are trying to find voltage at your horn. But other, another way to do it, just to actually test the horns, to just run hot wires to them. And I, I've got a couple of wires that I scabbed together years ago, and I used them for a lot of little testing stuff. So I'll show you these here in a bit. All right, so here I've got the horn that needs to be tested. Hello Kitty making another appearance on camera to help me keep this thing from getting scratched. So I've got positive and negative coming from the battery. I just got alligator clipped them. I use these a lot for any general testing of, of power motors and stuff like that just to make sure they work. Made them a couple years ago, it's super easy and super handy to have. Just to test this thing, you wanna connect to the hot and then uh, find a, you know, you might have to sand off a little piece of uh, metal here, but she works. Don't wanna to touch these things together until you get them apart because you'll blow your fittings. So anyway, let's get this thing cleaned up and installed and see if it really works. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and install this horn as is. It's a little bit of a mess, but uh, you really can't see it when it's installed, so. And every time it seems like I go to detail a horn, it stops working. Yippee-ki-yay, problem fixed. So, what thing I didn't cover when I kind of breezed through the possible issues that you might have when you don't have power to your horns is that power comes from somewhere, which is a horn relay. And on a 70 to 72 Buick GS, it is in the dashboard, under the dashboard, I don't know, inside, 
hiding. It's right about there. So it's kind of difficult to get to. So you've got to remove the liner for the glove box and you can reach up there pretty easily. It's just a 3 8 inch bolt holding the thing on with some wire connections. In theory, if the if the horn relay was good, you would hear a click. Now you can't hear that when I'm doing it like that, but when the horns didn't work and you hit the horn, you could hear the relay clicking. So my initial thought was that, well, maybe the relay works and went ahead and started just over here testing the voltage to the horns and lo and behold we had it so if you didn't have power to your horns here first thing i would check is just the relay because it's a pretty easy fix and trying to trace wires through through harnesses and stuff isn't exactly something that uh, we like to do okay since we're playing with the orange car i figured i'd do a quick walk around mini tour of it. Hopefully I don't get bored of my rambling. Original Flame Orange 72 GS Stage 1 automatic car. Black interior. Basically a complete cosmetic restoration with some some mechanical work. We tried to try to work with what we had mechanically but there was a lot of stuff that ended up being a mess and uh, so it turned into more of a complete restoration sans frame if you know what I mean so we did a complete body and paint on the exterior trunk interior the only thing I did under the car was put new exhaust on it put a new fuel tank in and kind of hosed a little bit of black paint on on some of the frame rails just to make it look pretty when you stuck your head under there this was to be a driver so we didn't go crazy with the body off rotisserie restoration we just wanted to make it pretty and drive like it's supposed to. So we rebuilt the transmission, resealed the engine, rebuilt the heads. Forgive me, I have not detailed the car yet, so there's all kinds of smudges and crap everywhere. New seat covers on the front. It's got originals on the back. New carpet, new headliner, original door panels, which is really cool, because these things are generally just ratted out. All new glass in the car, except for the rear glass is in pretty good shape. So this car is going to the owner uh, in May at the GS Nationals in Bowling Green, Kentucky, Beach Bend Raceway, May 12 to 15. Be there, be square if you're a GS guy, because that's the show to go to. It's their 40th anniversary event. We missed it last year because of COVID, so pretty special. And uh, this car is going to be there, and the owner is going to see it for the first time, which is super exciting. Speaking of shows, this car is going to be at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals in Rosemont, Illinois, November 20 to 21 of this year, 2021. It was canceled last year also because of COVID. Imagine that. This is a, uh, the reason it's under the cover is because it's going to be an unveil car. So there's about 10 to 20 cars, I don't remember the number exactly, that they unveil every year at this show. People build their cars specifically to be unveiled at this show, which makes it a pretty special event because it's it's always fresh so please mark your calendars if you're if you're a muscle car guy or gal or even if you're into automobilia there's all kinds of vendors there that cater to the automotive enthusiast and um yeah so we're super excited to have this car there this is a teal uh let me start from the beginning it is a 70 buick gs stage one convertible automatic in teal mist gray it's got a white convertible top with a pearl white interior Absolutely striking color combo. I'll give you a little peek of the cover. Color. It is just an absolutely knocked down, drop dead, gorgeous color. And I cannot wait to get the cover off this thing at the show. I'm going to make an attempt, I think, to do a live feed of it when we do the unveil. I won't be able to do it because I'll probably be standing next to the car. Anyway, November 20 and 21 at the Rosemont. Uh, convention Center, Donald J. Stevens, Donald J. Stevens Convention Center for McCacken, for short. They're going to have other displays like barn finds, too. This is a pretty cool car. It's an original Triple Brown 70 GS Stage 1. 
that has been in this condition for God knows how many years, sat on a farm for some more years, and now it's here for a complete redo. It needs everything, so um, forgive the mess. I'm a complete disaster this year, or this week, probably this year too. So, but there's, this McCacken show is never the same show twice. Always different cars, so you're gonna, you're gonna see new cars every year. It's the show that I like to go to, and it's a lot of fun. Everybody, everybody has a good time there too. So, anyway, I think that'll do it for me today. Be sure to like and subscribe. Tell all your family, your friends, neighbors, dogs, cats, Facebook friends, Facebook unfriends, whoever you want to tell. All right. See you on the next video.